All right, so we are going to learn just real quick how to build an EMT, EMT species object and how to use that object to uh, build a niche model or distribution model, whatever you want to call it. Um, right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is get some environmental data. So we're just going to grab some world clim variables uh, using the get data function uh, from the raster package. Um, so we're going to say uh, main equals world clim. We're just going to use a, a resolution of, of, of 10 minutes right now. Um, and uh, var equals bio. And so that should get all of our bio clim layers. Um, we can just check on that by uh, plotting the first thing from that uh, stack. Uh, take a second here. There we go. Um, we don't really want to use the whole world, though. The, the species we're going to be using right now, it's a, a Ibero Lacerda monticola. It's a lizard um, uh, uh, from Europe. So we're going to trim this down real quick. We're just going to do env is, and we're going to use this crop function. We're going to crop the, our, our environmental layers, and we're going to crop them to an extent. Uh, and I just, I, I happen to know these numbers because I, I used them before. Uh, we're going to have an x min of negative 10, uh, x max of 17, y min of 39, y max of 48. So that should cut down all of our layers to a little box that contains uh, northern Spain and, and uh, much of Europe. All right, and there we go. We got, now again, we'll look at our first layer here. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so there we go. This is our little study region. And uh, now we're gonna start building an ENM tool species object. Now, this is uh, why I'm making this video. The, the process of um, building models in ENM tools is different from how it is in a lot of packages. And that's because the real kind of core function of ENM tools is to test hypotheses about similarities and differences between pairs of lineages or species or clades or whatever. And in order to do that, we have to do these Monte Carlo tests. And in order to do that, we have to actually be able to pass around these whole groups of data sets together. So we need to be able to pass around, let's say, range rasters and occurrence points and the names of species, all sort of stuff in like a little package. And so the way you work in ENM tools is you package each lineage up in an ENM tools species object. So since I'm working with uh, Ibero Lacerda Monticola, I'm going to create an ENM tools object called. Monticola, and I'm going to use this function called enmtools.species. And what that's done is it's created an empty object, as you can see over here, that has a slot for a range raster, a slot for presence points, a slot for background points, a slot for any models we might want to stuff in. And this one actually isn't used very much by the package itself. That's just if you want to save models with a species, you could do that, and a species name. So we're going to do, first off, we're just going to give our species a name and some presence points. So Monticola, and we'll dive in here and say species name equals, and we'll use the assignment operator. We'll try and be good. Iberla Serta Monticola. All right. And then we're going to give it some presence points. So. We're going to read in a CSV file. Um, okay, and that's just your good old-fashioned uh, data frame, Monticola. Just so you can see it. Just look at the top of it. Just your good old-fashioned data frame of longitudes and latitudes we've loaded in there. Now, every time you build an enum tool species object or add something to it, it's a good idea to use this check species function. So um, the strength of doing this as a sort of packaged up species kind of thing is that we actually have a reliable format that all of our downstream functions know that our uh, um, uh, data is going to be in. So we can actually, we've written these functions that essentially exist to make your life easier as a modeler, but those functions require that your data have this specific structure. So this check species function uh, checks 
the structure of your EDM tool species object and it returns a clean EDM tool species object with everything formatted correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our species. Check species is going to check the format of it and fix anything that needs to be fixed and it's going to pass a, 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 a fixed EDM tool species object back out. So there we go. Now we can look at our uh, uh, plot. Sorry. We can look at our uh, uh, species object here um, just to see what it looks like. So we're using leaflet here, uh, kind of one of the nice things about, about having all of our stuff in this reliable format is it allows us to do some really nice visualizations fairly easily. So what you can see here is this is actually uh, um, just a, a sort of plot of well the world actually, I mean I guess a map of the world, and we've got our data points here. If we had a range raster loaded in, you would also see that here. And if we had background points selected, you would also see those here. So it's a, a really nice little visualization of your whole uh, species object, right? So what can we do with our species object? We're gonna build a Maxent model real fast. Okay, and we're gonna call it Montecola.mx. And we're going to do enumtools.maxent. We're going to pass in our species object, pass in our environment layers. And that is literally all you have to do to build a simple model. Uh, we haven't set aside any data for, for uh, testing here. Uh, we will do that um, shortly. But right now, I just want you to notice, all I had to do was give it that species object and a set of environment layers. And it already knew what to do for everything else. So since it didn't have a range raster, for instance, it took uh, background points from our entire uh, uh, um, study area, right? So it basically took background points from here. If we had provided a range raster, it would sample them from the range raster. Um, so it took those background points, uh, it sent everything to uh, Maxent, and it built us a model. And uh, it returns an enum tools model object, which has all of our data in it. And it also has, for instance, it automatically did uh, evaluation. So it, it used Dismo's evaluate function to get us our AUC and all that stuff. Um, if we had uh, passed it some testing data, we would have a uh, testing evaluation as well. Um, but it's also got, well, other stuff that we'll get to later. But uh, um, it also got, we've got response plots. So uh, these are sort of like, you've probably seen something similar to these in Maxent itself. Um, yeah, uh, give me just a second here, they're drawing. So here we've got the green is the distribution of environmental variable uh, across our background. So in this case, that, that entire like uh, um, chunk of Europe. So this is Bioclim 19. The red is the distribution of our presence points. It's a sort of smooth distribution uh, in, in terms of that environmental variable. So there's the the uh, 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 frequency with which our species ap appears at different values in these environments. And in the blue here is actually the function, the suitability function our model has estimated as a function of this uh, uh, environmental gradient. So this is the marginal suitability function uh, um, uh, along this environmental gradient. And you get those for all of your um, uh, environmental predictors. Um, and some of these look ridiculous, but we're not really trying to build a good model here, just essentially um, display what what the, 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 the thing is doing. Okay, so that's cool, right? What if we want to get a test evaluation? So here we just go montecola.mx is in tools maxent montecola in and now to, to testing we just have to do test prop equals and some fraction. So we'll say set aside 30% of our data um, for, uh, uh, for testing, and it will do this randomly by default, but can also do geographically structured uh, test data. Uh, so now it's running that Maxent model again. And here we go. And so now if we want to see what our test AUC is, for instance, uh, we go montacol.mx, so this is our model, Intel's model object, and we've got this test evaluation object inside of it which this is a Dismo Evaluate object. So everything you do with Dismo Evaluate objects, you can do uh, uh, with this thing, because that's all it is. So that's cool, right? Um, you've also got the full, since this is Maxent, you've got the full Maxent model, which 
actually just spits out the page that comes out of the Maxent model. Pretty cool, right? So, uh, we've, we've got that. That's a, a good way to build uh, a quick model. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's probably one of the lowest effort ways of building a model in R. Um, but the really nice thing about it is, so we've got this here for a Maxent model. Uh, if we want to do this for uh, BioClim, we can just use the enumtools.bc function. And other than that, the syntax is exactly the same. Um, right? So we've, as I say, we, we sort of, the reason we've done this approach is we need to be able to pass models back and forth. But what we really needed was a generic interface to all the different sort of modeling algorithms we use. So what we've done is we've used these enum tools modeling functions to essentially genericize, if that's a word, uh, uh, the interface to a bunch of different algorithms. I think right now we've got Maxent, GAM, GLM, um, Random Forests, and Domain. Um, so we can actually just view our montecola.bc here, see what that looks like. Yeah, you can see it's a, sort of a lot more tightly kind of couple of the points here. We've also, I showed you interactive plots for enum tool species objects, but we've also got interactive plots for enum tools models. Uh, and here we go, and that's going to essentially plot, let's zoom in on this, <laughs> that's going to plot our suitability raster in this sort of zoomable uh, plot. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, so uh, red is training points, green is test points, right? And so you can zoom in and look around your little map here, and it's very handy. Yeah, neat. Um, what else was I going to show you real quick? Oh, right. So if you want to build a GLM, whoops, um, you can. All right, this is going to, this may spit an error because I don't have enough data points to do this probably, but I've got like 18. Uh, environment layers here, but this is just to show you how this works. Okay, so, all right, it's not complaining yet. Uh, <laughs> so, ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, it's gonna say it's rank deficient or something. Yeah, uh, that's just because we've essentially, we've used 19 predictors there. Um, with, with, uh, uh, without that many data points, and GLMs do not like that for very good reasons. But right now we're going to ignore that and, and, and say, what, what actually did I not provide there that you would expect me to provide for a GLM? What I didn't provide there was a formula. I didn't actually tell it what that function looks like. And so um, uh, what happens is with uh, the uh, ENM Tools R package is if you are using a, a, a method that requires a formula, so that's GLMs or GAMs, um, and you don't provide a formula, it will just make one automatically, and it will say uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, occurrence of your species is a linear function of all the predictors that you put in there. Uh, I would not advise relying on that default. That's just letting you know that it's there. So what it said is, since we didn't provide a formula, it said presence is function of blah, blah, blah. Um, so it just came up with that automatically. But if we want to be uh, better people, I guess, <laughs> um, we can provide a formula. So we, we pass in our species here. We pass in our environmental layers. We say test prop is 0 0.3 again. But now we can say f, that's the name of our formula, so presence is a function of bio 10 plus bio 15. Let's, I'm just going to drop this down here so it's easy to read. There we go. And it likes that a lot better um, because we only had two predictors. Right? So it made us a model using just those two. Um, of course, there I actually made that a strictly increasing or a decreasing linear function, and that, that's a little bit weird. So we could actually make this a polynomial by doing Montecola.glm. Uh, so even tools dot oops, GLM passing our species, our environmental layers, test prop is 0 0.3, and now we can do f 
equals presence oops, as a function of, and we can do, this is a, a nice little trick here that, that not everyone knows, I think. You could say, we can do a, a, a let's say a, a third order polynomial of bio 10. So that's gonna have a, a cubic, a quadratic, and a linear term, plus polynomial bio 15, and we'll do that third order. Right? Whoops, yeah. Something went wrong there. Um, it, it just, it's a, uh, um, yeah. But we're just playing around, so we're not gonna uh, uh, worry about it too much. I would, I would dig more into that if I was actually gonna use this model for me. So there you go. Uh, um, we can actually just experiment with, you know, different uh, uh, ways of doing this. Um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's a thing. There you go, and we can do the interactive plot thing. There you go. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it plotted our background points in there too, um, which we can, if I remember correctly, uh, turn off. Yeah, there we go. So if you want to just do your visualizations here and play around, I mean, you can have your background points that it automatically selected for you. You can have those displayed in the map or not. Uh, um, it's sort of up to you. So, yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that, that you may be wondering is, okay, so what if I don't want to use all of my environmental layers to draw my background from? Um, that's actually what's in that Monticola species object. There's a slot there for a range map. Uh, here, we didn't actually define the thing, but basically what you could do is you can load in um, any raster you want, and it will use that as a mask from which to draw background points when it builds models. It's also what we use uh, um, when we use EM tools to do like background tests or similarity tests, whatever you want to call them. Those range rasters are, are what's used as the sort of ranges of our species uh, as, uh, for that as well. Um, but if you're just building models, it's what's used to draw background points from. So um, uh, we can use a function uh, from enum tools called uh, was it a background dot raster dot buffer is the name of the function. And uh, what it does is it actually sort of draws a circular buffer around all of your occurrence points, uh, merges that together, and then converts that to a raster that it will then essentially return as, as your species range. So we will put in um, our species presence points and then we have to tell it uh, what radius we want our buffer to be and uh, this is provided in meters not kilometers so we'll say a hundred thousand meters which is a hundred kilometers and then uh, we need to provide it a, a raster to use as a mask. So we'll just give it the top layer of our environment layers. And it's using this to set the extent um, of the, the, the range raster and also the, the, the resolution of it and all that. So we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick. And you'll see that this is now a, a, uh, um, a raster. And of course, uh, we now, since we've modified our species object, we'd like to uh, run the check species function again. Cool. Now let's do a um, interactive plot enum tool species uh, for Monticola. And you'll see our range raster kind of pops up here. So you've got now this. Uh, um, uh, we've got our occurrence points. We've also got this dark gray here, which is what we're actually using as our species range for modeling. And now if we go back and sort of redo one of these uh, uh, GLMs, I'm just gonna copy and paste this, there we go. So now it's gonna draw points from our uh, just from this the, this dark gray area. You can see that it actually didn't get as many points as it wanted, so it defaults to wanting, I think it's a thousand training points, or sorry, a thousand background points, um, and it was only able to draw 962. I'm not gonna worry about that very much uh, right now, but uh, um, yeah, here we go. 
we can plot, we can, sorry, use our interactive plot here. And there's this. We'll turn off our background points. Yeah. So this is now a model built using that sort of much narrower background. And as you can see, it seems to be much more sort of closely tied to where our species actually occurs. Uh, one of the kind of fun things when you're playing around with these polynomials is to actually use uh, those um, uh, response plots to get some sort of idea of uh, uh, how changing the, the order of polynomial you're using uh, changes the responses you're estimating for your species. All right, so there you go. You can uh, uh, set up a species object. You can set up a, a, a range for it and use that for modeling. Um, if you want to, you can actually provide background points as well. So there is this, um, whoops, a data frame here for background points. Um, and uh, um, that will actually supersede your species range uh, um, as the, the source of background. So if you provide background points, it will use those instead of using that range raster. Um, so if you have background points you like, if you want to do like a target group background or something like that, uh, uh, that, that's really easy to do. Okay, there you go. That's how you build a species object and how you build models. And uh, um, hopefully that was illuminating. Um, it automates a lot of the really common tasks that... Uh, um, uh, uh, people typically use for, uh, a niche modeling, distribution modeling. And, and so it's really, I mean, we've tried to make it as, as low effort and as pleasant to use as possible. Um, it is still very much in development, though. So if anyone has, you know, suggestions or whatever, we're, we're always open to hearing.